Well, that was weird. Welcome back. This episode will help guide you through the first area in the game. This is the tutorial section, so I recommend you figure out the controls and get familiar with moving around. Assuming you didn't skip the cutscene, a mysterious knight just dropped a corpse through a hole in the ceiling. On that body is a key. This is the key to your cell. You should use it to open the door in front of you. As a side note, you should get into the habit of reading item descriptions, especially those of key items as they will often tell you where and or how to use them. Check out anything else that seems interesting too. Heck, if you come to like a particular piece of equipment, check out the description of it, see what it has to say. But don't feel like you have to read every single thing either, it's only so important. This whole level acts as a tutorial. You should read the messages on the ground, there's special ones put here by the developers. You really should try and make your way through this area on your own. It's the start of the game, you're not meant to fail too much here. The end of this section has you escaping the asylum and going towards a cliff. Good luck. You can pause now and try to clear this area on your own. Feel free to come back after you reach the cliff. Welcome back. What an intro, right? Well, if you're stuck here, that's totally okay too. There's no shame in it. It's the easiest part of the game, but this is a hard game. Let's get through this area together. I'll also be explaining the mechanics of the game, seeing as this is a tutorial. I'll cover the things the developers did, but also some other things that may only be relevant later on. Let's briefly touch on the controls. I'm going to assume you're using a controller, as I wouldn't recommend using a keyboard and mouse. I'll also be defaulting to the Xbox controller inputs. Move your character with the left analog stick. Move the camera with the right analog stick. Press B while stationary to do a back hop. Press B while moving to roll. Hold B while moving to sprint. Press B while sprinting to jump. Press B while on the ladder to slide down. Jumping is a bit strange in this game, it'll take some getting used to, and jumping won't feel very safe or comfortable at first, especially when you're trying to jump over a bottomless pit or something. The L1 and R1 buttons will use our currently equipped and selected equipment in our left and right hands. You start the game with a broken sword in your right hand. It's a very weak weapon. If your weapon disappeared somehow, try pressing right on the D-pad. That's how you switch between your two right hand slots, though right now it'll just put away your broken sword. Press R1 for a light attack. Press R2 for a heavy attack. Press R1 and move forward at the same time to perform a kick. Some weapons will replace a kick with a unique attack, such as the rapier and the scimitar. Kicking an opponent who is blocking will usually break their guard. Press R2 and move forward at the same time to perform a jumping attack. This attack won't bounce off walls and can't be parried. Pressing R1 and R2 on a ladder will attack up and down respectively. This is almost completely useless knowledge, but it's knowledge nonetheless. Doing this too much will cause you to run out of stamina and fall off the ladder though, which is very funny. Pressing L1 and L2 will use what's in your left hand. Your character is right-handed, so if you try to put a weapon in your left hand, it won't be quite as effective as if it were in your right hand. You may end up blocking instead of attacking, for example. Don't let that stop you from dual wielding if you'd like, but a shield or spellcasting tool will more often than not be more useful in your left hand. L2 will most often be a parry, that's the case with your empty hand, and almost every shield in the game. You can also parry with some of the weapons, but only if they're in your left hand. For example, with the scimitar, the starting weapon for the wanderer. To make it short, there are three parrying speeds. Most weapons will have a fast parry, with quick recovery but a small parry window. Most shields have a medium parry, and some special weapons and shields can do a long parry, with the largest parry window but slowest recovery time. I'll cover how to parry later on. Press Y to two-hand your right-handed equipment, in this case, your broken sword. This will usually cause you to do more damage with your attacks, but also notice how your moveset has slightly changed. This can be very relevant depending on the weapon. While two-handing, your L1 and L2 buttons may also change, most often being a block using the defensive stats of whatever weapon you're holding, which is usually worse than a shield, but still useful in a pinch. If you press in R3, the right stick, you will lock onto a nearby enemy. This isn't always a good thing, and being locked on in some situations can get you killed, but if you're in a one-on-one -on -one fight with someone your size with attacks that you can block and parry, it can be pretty useful. Okay, enough with the tutorial, let's move on. Run down the hallway and climb the ladder.
In the courtyard, there's a bonfire. Approach it and interact with it to light it. When you rest at one, it will heal you and cause almost all enemies to go back to their initial positions. Previously dead enemies will now be revived as well, though there are some enemies that do not respond in this way. There's a door to our right, but it's locked. Our only way forward is through the big door. If you open it and look up, you can see a friend above us. Before entering, you can optionally make sure you're fast rolling. You can do a bit of math and figure it out, or just unequip your sword and some armor until you're rolling faster. Anyways, go ahead and read the message. Take its advice, but you'll notice the door closed behind us. Feel free to try and fight the Asylum Demon, but this is a good point to explain what kind of game Dark Souls is and what it isn't. Dark Souls isn't, as one might assume, an extremely difficult game for hardcore gamers. It's a game that presents you with challenges that may seem impossible, but gives you the tools and the path to borderline trivialize the game if you want. Is the game hard? Yes, arguably. But believe it or not, it wants you to succeed. Some souls likes forget that last part. Anyways, you may have missed it if you read the message since the box may have covered it up, and the shock of the demon may have shifted your focus a bit, but a door opened up right as you entered the room. Maybe the knight from before opened it. We'll never know. But what we do know is that this fight isn't a fair one and you should leave now and come back with stronger gear. That's a recurring theme throughout the game, so remember it. In the next area, there's a bonfire. These are checkpoints. Feel free to light it and rest at it. Ahead, we'll get a pretty good shield and equipment tutorial. Hollow, the zombie down the hallway, is firing arrows at us. You're meant to run in and enter the safe room on your left, where there's an item. Our class is shield. Every class starts with a shield because they're pretty useful. You can then equip it in the first slot of your left hand through your equipment menu. Our right hand is the top two slots and the left hand is the two bottom ones. You can equip it in your right hand, but you'll just punch with it instead of guarding with it. And weapons are better suited for attacking than most shields in the game, so let's not do that for now. Again, you may have slot 1 or 2 equipped, so if you equip something to one slot but your character doesn't have it out, try pressing left or right on the d-pad to switch to the other slot. This may be confusing at first, but it's pretty darn useful later on. Holding L1 with a shield in your left hand will guard. Depending on your shield's defenses and the attack you're blocking, you may or may not take any damage when blocking an attack. When blocking an attack, it will drain your stamina. Depending on your shield's stability stat, higher stability will cost less stamina when blocking. Even weapons can have this stat. If you run out of stamina, you will become completely vulnerable for a long period of time, so you want to avoid that. It's also worth noting that while blocking, your stamina will regenerate much slower, so only block when you need to or are at full stamina. We can also sprint while blocking, so let's do that towards the Archer Hollow. The hollow will then run the hell away from us because we're just that menacing. That's how strong shields are, I guess. Anyways, you should loot this next body which will have our class's weapon, and equip that in your right hand, and take out the archer hollow. We're now met with a fog wall, and given the option to traverse the white light. Fog walls are often one-way doors before boss fights, but sometimes they're just one-time doorways to the next area. You'll never be sure what's on the other side until you walk through, so let's do that. In the next area, if you go left, you'll find a broken stairway with an item just out of reach. We can't get this item right now, we'll have to come back for it later, but it's a decently useful item. If we go to the right path, we're met with two options, up or down. If you go down, you can unlock that door to the bonfire we saw earlier. This is a key part of Dark Souls. 
shortcuts. You'll find many useful paths that will make traversal easier. The game world is extremely interconnected, and it's really cool how you can figure out many different ways to get to the same place, depending on the current game state. Anyways, feel free to rest at the bonfire, then let's head upstairs. And we get hit by a f***ing boulder. For what it's worth, you can avoid this by running back down the stairs on the left side, and it's a one-time trap. There will be traps and ambushes set up throughout the world, and you need to be careful and take your time when you go into areas you're not familiar with. There's a hollow at the top of the stairs. Take them out, and you'll notice the door is locked. So we go back down the stairs and see that the boulder knocked open a wall to a room we couldn't access before. Oscar is here. The knight that helped you out of your cell. Oh, you. Talk to him, or kill him, and you'll get the key for the door upstairs, as well as an extremely important item called an Estus Flask. In your equipment screen, there are five slots to the right of our two hand slots. These are usable item slots, so you put them here, then while in game, you can cycle through them with down on the D-pad and use the selected item with X. If you press X with an item you can't use or with no item selected, you'll do a funny shrug animation. The Estus Flask is a healing potion that is refilled every time you rest at a bonfire. That's the gameplay loop. Enemies respawn, but your healing item is refilled as well. While you do need to manage your Estus usage, you shouldn't shy away from using it either, since you have an unlimited supply of it. There are ways to increase the amount of charges as well as how much it heals later on, which you will need to do. The idea is that you can use Estus to progress through an area and find the next bonfire, which is a checkpoint, and if you start running low you can head back and try again. You can keep trying until you don't need to use all of your Estus and or find the next bonfire, whichever comes first. Be aware that using an Estus flask is a lengthy animation, so don't use it without thinking first. Also be aware that you can press the button multiple times to chug more of the drink. Also, if you run out of Estus and use the flask, your character will still do an animation, so pay attention. It is a funny animation though. Anyways, use the key to open the door at the top of the stairs. At this point, the game will give you a casting tool, a catalyst, a talisman, or a pyromancy flame, if your class starts with one. If you chose Hunter, you'll get a bow and some arrows here. There are some more hollows here. Be careful, they can easily overwhelm you if you're not careful. The way they're set up is classic. There are two melee hollows and one ranged one. If you're not careful and rush in without a plan, you'll definitely at least take some damage. But if you think about it, you can more effectively engage with this encounter. If you get their attention and pull back into the area you were just in, the melee ones will follow you, and you can take them out, probably one at a time due to the choke they have to go through, which will leave the ranged hollow alone and much easier to deal with. Approach every encounter this way. Make it as balanced or unfair for your enemies as you possibly can, as they'll do the same. There's an optional soldier in the next area. The game tells us how to backstab and how to parry or post. Treat this as an optional challenge. Your enemy has a different moveset and a shield. Take it slow and read your opponent. The door behind them is locked, but that would lead to the item we saw earlier on the broken stairs. And then there's a huge fog wall with a message telling us how to do a plunging attack. This fog wall most certainly leads to a boss fight, right? And gosh, I really wonder which one it'll be. Now that you have a weapon that will actually deal some damage when you hit someone with it, you should have no trouble with this boss. But let's go over the fight a little all the same. As soon as you enter the boss area, do as the game told you and do a plunging attack. This will take a huge chunk off the boss's health bar. From here you should be able to just attack the demon during openings, healing when you need to, and defeat it with few issues. If you are having some trouble in any new encounter, take a step back, take your time, stay away from the enemy, look for weaknesses and openings. 
If nothing else, you should see what attacks and movements the enemy has to offer. This goes for any encounter in the game. Don't always rush in. Take it slow. Experiment. See what works and what doesn't. Take that as far as you feel you need to. And don't forget your shield. If you're not sure if you're safe, hold up your shield. You can even block the Asylum Demon's swings, as long as it hits your shield and doesn't go around it. You can't block the overhead swings unless you're far enough away that it hits your shield instead of you, for example. When rolling, you have iframes. That is, you are invincible when rolling. Be sure to roll into an enemy's attack so you can pass through it and be on the other side of it when your iframes run out. Rolling takes a lot less stamina than blocking, and with a successful evade, you'll take no damage. Remember to roll just before the attack hits you. It'll take some getting used to. Make sure to keep your health high enough to survive one or two hits if possible. If you need to heal, run far enough away and do it while your enemy is busy with an attack or other action. The Asylum Demon has a huge weakness in that it attacks and turns very slowly. If you stay by its rear, you should be able to damage it with relative safety. Keep in mind that enemies may have special attacks based on your position relative to them. If you're far away, they may have a ranged attack. If you're behind them, they may have something to hit you with. Also notice that sometimes the enemy will attack in a combo. Try and sufficiently learn their moveset so you can be prepared for many situations. Also, while more useful later on, remember that if you ever need to run away, you can do so by quitting the game and reloading your save. Let's say you're fighting a boss and you've run out of Estus. Reloading your save will put you outside of the fog wall. Keep in mind that you'll still need to revisit a bonfire to refill your flask. Also, doing this will not keep the boss's health where it was. You'll have to fight it again at full HP. Now that we're done here, we open the door with the big pilgrim key and make our way to the cliff. If you explore a little, you'll find two things of interest. First, is an item that when consumed will give us souls. Again, souls are the number at the bottom right of your screen. The Asylum Demon just gave us 2,000 souls, which is not too shabby. 
It's our currency for buying items, as well as experience points for leveling up. There's also a bird's nest positioned precariously on the edge of a crumbling structure. We'll have to come back later for this to do anything, but you can remember where it is. And finally, good job. Go straight ahead.